Welcome everybody to another edition of Dan's Grand Valley Railroad. Hey, I want to just say welcome to the channel if you're new or if you're a recent subscriber. Um, I haven't been doing a lot of project videos lately uh, just because uh, I didn't have any projects going on and I was kind of busy with some other things. But uh, we're going to be uh, getting back into some projects uh, again. Uh, some upgrades to the layout uh, as well as some other uh, projects uh, on uh, rolling stock like we're going to be doing today. Um, that being said, uh, I've talked to you guys before about a flat car with an airplane load. It's an Atherin flat car. And uh, I've had that since I was a kid. And um, it's had some issues. It's gotten broken a little bit. And that's what we're going to be working on today, uh, restoring that. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the Rocky Mountain Train Show. Uh, that was, uh, let's see, April 1st, last Saturday. And uh, that was a lot of fun. I went with uh, Neighbor Mike and we had a great time. I also met up with a couple of fans of the channel. Um, Bill and Judy from uh, Loveland, Colorado, uh, took time out of their uh, show to come up and say hi and talk to me and... Uh, we chatted uh, about the Grand Valley layout. Uh, Bill is building one. He's recently retired, and he's building a Grand Valley layout just like this. And he had some questions and uh, a couple of uh, comments that uh, he wanted to say about it and uh, ask about it. So that was awesome. Those two are super friendly and super nice. So Bill and Judy, thank you so much for uh, meeting up with me at the train show. That was awesome to meet you guys. So um, that being said, uh, we are going to get on to a little project this week. Like I said, restoring a uh, an old rail car, one of mine from uh, being a kid. But before we do that, I just want to remind you guys um, to, to go ahead and like and subscribe. Uh, the channel is growing and therefore uh, I've got enough subscribers now to start making a little revenue, which can help with the... Uh, the channel, advancing the channel and getting some more uh, interesting items like maybe some new locomotives or some new rolling stock or buildings or, or stuff like that. If you want to help contribute to the channel, there's a couple ways you can do that. If you look at any video and you look down at the description, you're going to see merchandise that I have there. I've got the Dan's Grand Valley Railroad uh, mugs, there are shirts, there are now hats uh, that are pretty cool. I'll put up a picture of some of the hats that I'm designing right now. Uh, just a bit of a warning, the company Spring, who makes this stuff, um, they're a little bit behind. <laughs> so be patient with them. They are working on getting the stuff out as soon as possible. I've got a couple of sample hats that I'll show you guys as soon as I get them. But they're, uh, they're pretty cool. I'm really excited to get those things. Then also, if you look down in the description, you'll see a thanks button. And that gives you an opportunity to uh, do a super thanks, which is on uh, Facebook, which uh, you can contribute a little bit of money towards the channel, which will help with uh, revenue and trying to, to expand things. So um, check that out. And uh, also, if you go to my... Uh, any uh, page of my channel, you'll see a tab up there that says uh, store. So if you go there, you'll see all the items in the store which are available from hoodies to jackets to, uh, I don't know if I have jackets, but hoodies, shirts, t-shirts, other things. So I'd appreciate it if you guys check that out. And uh, so without further ado, let's head over to the bench and I'll show you what I got working on over there for this week's video. All right, so over here on the bench, um, you can see I've got this flat car here. I've already got the trucks off of it, but this is an old school Athern flat car that I've had since I was a kid. And like I said, it's got this airplane load on here, which is really cool, especially when you're a kid, because you can, you know, play with it and put it together and have your model runway and airstrip and play with the uh, the vehicles and the cars, but uh, that's pretty cool. 
thing that's bothered me with it for a while is that um, over time the propeller props have broken off and then one of the wing uh, has a little plastic thing that's missing if you, you look on this one you'll see there's supposed to be two and there's only one on this and that's what keeps the wings locked in properly uh, when you're when you have it together but other than those problems as far as it being a load on the of the car that's not too big of a problem but i did kind of want to fix that so what i found was uh there are the complete kits here uh for the airplane and i happened to find this one at the rocky mountain train show for uh 10 bucks so this is the complete airplane only difference is it's white instead of silver i'm not sure if i'm going to be uh painting that or not haven't decided yet, but, uh, so that was pretty much all I got at the train show. Uh, neighbor Mike went crazy. He got a bunch of stuff and, uh, he really had a blast. We had a good time. I didn't take any video. It was essentially the same as last year, a couple of different vendors, but nothing that was, uh, really of interest to my channel and, and stuff. Uh, but it was a good time. So, uh, with that being said, this is what I picked up. That was a good price. Uh, you can see $12 here. I've seen as much as 22 uh, or 25 on eBay. So I thought 10 bucks, I snatched it up. Uh, so then back to this car here. If you look here, one of the couplings, uh, you can see it has the old Tyco horn coupling. That's what I used when I was a kid. But one of them has broken off here. You can see so we're going to be putting a new kd coupler on there you know uh switching this over to a kd coupler as well and then i think i'd like to do just a little bit of weathering on this and maybe paint the tops of these toolboxes here uh brown those are like some little uh, accessory boxes for the hooks and chains that hold down the load so i want to do that uh, luckily all of the stirrup steps are in place on this guy. So that's what I want to do. I want to get the trucks back on. Um, and it, to show the age on this guy, wow, it's just falling apart on me here. But, uh, to show the age, you can see the, uh, the trucks actually have those springs, the real live springs in there. Those are the, the old school trucks that, uh, uh really moved and uh had real springs so that's kind of cool <laughs> so with that being said for you know this older car and airplane uh we're gonna fix up the airplane and uh, i also failed to mention that there's a missing brake wheel on this car i happen to have some uh, from some of the other restorations I've done. I've got some modern brake wheels. So we'll be putting one of those on there. And uh, so then I noticed another <laughs> car and airplane on eBay uh, just the other day. Here's the box. I was able to get it for a good price. So it's uh, pretty much identical uh, to the one that I've always had. The airplane does have the propeller which is awesome. And uh, some of the same problems with this car though. Now this is a much newer car. It's got more modern trucks on it with uh, those aren't uh, the actual springs. Um, it has the missing brake wheel, although it was in the box. And it has the horn coupler on it on one end and broken on the other end. And you can see the, the rust on the the uh, axles here. Uh, I don't think it was broken when I bought it on eBay. I think it got, it actually broke in transport, but uh, I'm going to be putting modern KD couplers on there anyway with the new gearbox, uh, new draft boxes. So that's all right. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with these guys. I want to get some dull coat on them and then we're going to paint these. Uh, like I said, going to weather them a little bit paint the toolboxes, just do a little bit of detailing, fix the brake wheels, and then, uh, of course, we'll fix uh, the trucks and the draft boxes. 
And then as far as the airplane goes, I, you know, obviously want to keep this one together with this uh, so that, uh, you know, I've got a complete load. What we're going to do is take this airplane and uh, make a complete load with uh, a good propeller for my original uh, car. And uh, I think I will paint this since it's white, it's primer, primer white. I think I'll paint it silver. And uh, notice that this plane has some black showing on the wing. Uh, this is the one that came from eBay. See on that wing a little bit. So uh, probably wouldn't hurt if I can find a silver that is uh, the same. I'll paint those two the same. And then we'll have this extra plane here. And I thought what I could do is fabricate a running propeller out of a piece of acrylic uh, that we use for uh, windows in our buildings. And this could actually be sitting somewhere where it's running and we've got a propeller. And uh, as far as the wing goes, I think I'll just glue them in uh, so they're nice and sturdy since it has the broken thing on there. And it won't be needing to go on a car, so it doesn't need to uh, come out. I may do that. I may not. I may just leave it so that I may find another one of these cars someday without the plane. Uh, but anyway, that's the plan. So that's what we're going to do this video. And uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Here we go. All right. Before we start, I just want to show you I've got a, a package here of... Uh, KD couplers. I use the 148s for just about everything. Uh, if it's going to need something different, of course, we can change them out later, but I like to have those around. Those come with these draft box kits here. Uh, of course, that's a bulk pack. I've got other ones that come with these. Uh, but so what we're going to do, the first thing is where I, it's broken here, the frame it, that other draft box has broken off. Um, I'm going to trim that up there, that piece, and I'm actually going to glue the new draft box to the metal right here. So uh, I'm not going to glue it to the frame because the frame lifts out. And if we want to take this car apart at any point, I want the draft box to be connected to the metal plate, and that'll come out. Um, and the reason is I don't want the metal, uh, the draft box to be attached here to the actual car because this opening is a little bit smaller. I want the draft box to be mounted just behind See, just like that, if you can see that. So that means it's going to have to sit on the metal. And there won't be enough, once it's sitting on the metal like that, there won't be enough uh, plastic for it to glue to the frame. So that's why I'm going to glue it down to the metal. But anyway, let's get this trimmed up here. We'll get the other draft box off, and then we'll mount true draft boxes on there. All right, I just put a brand new blade in the X-Acto knife. Um, you want to start always when you're trimming stuff or, you know, working on model kits, you want to start with a brand new blade. Now, I noticed that there is a crack here, right? This is separating, you can see there. So after I trim this piece off and just get it flush, I'm actually going to put just a little bit of uh, CA glue in there just to... Uh, uh, glue that back together so we don't have an issue. See how that has just split completely. And what I want to do here is push this down, cut that off like that, and just trim that off a little bit carefully. So there, I've got a nice flush edge. Now I'm going to open that up and just put a little CA glue in there and let that uh, get uh, nice and, and uh, glued up. And while that's happening, then we'll get this other end off of here and uh, get that fixed up.
that just glued instantly. I don't think I even need to spritz it with the uh, accelerator. But since I have it for giggles, we'll just hit it with that. Now, this uh, Hobby Town accelerator, it has a smell to it. It's not a bad smell. It's kind of a flowery smell. And I don't like it as well as the Tight Bond product. It comes in an aerosol can, and I like it a little bit better. This also seems to be a little bit oily, just kind of leaves a residue. Um, it goes away eventually, but I just don't care for it as well as the Tight Bond. So, okay, we'll uh, let that dry. I'm going to wipe this off, and then we'll uh, see what we have. All right, so that is essentially glued onto the metal plate. I've got the uh, KD whisker coupler on there. Now, one issue that I might see uh, being a problem, uh, having this be the same. So let's go ahead and put this on here. And you'll see, we put the frame on. There is just... It's just a little short. See how it just barely is sticking out from there because it's back, uh, the you know, that thickness there. Um, so that being said, I might need to get a coupler with a longer shank, uh, but we'll just have to try it and see how it works. It may be fine, but it may need a coupler with a longer shank. And then, uh, of course, this side looks fine. Um, so that remains to be seen uh, if that's going to be a problem. I don't have any, so I'll have to order some uh, that have the longer shank. These are just standard. Um, so while we're gluing, let's go ahead and glue in a brake wheel there. I have them here. So let's get set up and we'll glue that in. I wanted to mention uh, the way it broke, it looked like the the shaft of the original wheel was broken off in there. So I got my uh, handy tiny little drill index and I picked one out that is about the same size as the new wheels shank. And I just drilled this out real carefully uh, just to have a nice hole for that shank to go into there. Um, so what we'll do here, I have to be careful if I the, things want to jump off the bench here. So I just want to try to just dry fit it. So I just take my tweezers here and carefully get that in the hole. There we go. So yeah, that's, that's good. Looks good. So I'm just going to put a drop of glue on that and then that'll be done. Just going to put the trucks back on. I already put this one on. You want to make sure they're, they're nice and loose. Trucks that are too tight will cause derailing at switches and, um, uh, different uh, curves <laughs> if they don't uh, turn properly. So you always want to make sure that your trucks are loose. If you have a car that is, um, I just can't get that screw in there. Huge hands. This is why I don't do end scale, by the way. I can't even imagine trying to, trying to deal with those little tiny screws. But uh, if you've got a car that is going uh, one direction and it's fine and uh, you go a different direction and it uh, uh, by the way this is difficult for me because I'm doing this on camera and I'm having to sit back a little ways but uh, that's why because you're all watching that's why but uh, as I was saying if you have a car that's going one direction and it's fine and it goes a different direction and it derails. You might want to check the trucks and make sure that they're nice and loose, they turn well, and they pivot well. So, well, there we go. We've got our flat car back in service here. Got the trucks back on. We have a brake wheel 
And uh, now what we're going to do, I'll do the same thing with the other one. I won't do it on camera, but it's going to be the exact same thing that I just did uh, with this one. We'll do with this car here. It needs the exact same stuff. I failed to mention it's a different railroad. This one that I had uh, as a kid was Nickel Plate Road, which is kind of cool. NKP, which is, that's cool. And then uh, this one is Gulf Mobile in Ohio, which is kind of cool. So I can tell them apart uh, once I get them all fixed up. Uh, I'll be able to tell them apart just by the, the railroad. But uh, anyway, so this is good to go. I'm going to do a little painting on this guy, a little bit of weathering. Like I said, I hit it with some dull coat. So that'll help the, the weathering powders to hold on to it and everything. I'm going to paint these boxes and uh, get that going. And then we'll figure out what we're going to do with the airplane. All right, just a quick uh, note here. I ended up going with uh, a flat olive drab testers. Um, and uh, I think it looks really good. I didn't want it to be dark brown like wood or beige. I, and I started thinking, you know, I bet they would uh, have sort of a olive drab, almost like army. Um, I did it on both cars. Here is the other one. And I think that looks pretty cool. Two crates there mounted. So, uh, so I'm going to let that dry. And I actually took this off <laughs> uh, to make it a little easier to paint. And uh, I used the testers. Uh, when there's a blue bar like that on these testers paints, that's acrylic. That's water-based. If there is a red one like this, then that is um, enamel and that's oil based. Uh, I ended up using the acrylic because uh, that's the color I wanted. Um, little tip I learned a long time ago for cleaning brushes, little bit of Windex, any kind of Windex, uh, ammonia, window cleaner, just uh, spray it like that on a rag take your brush and wipe it in there and that cleans the brushes from the acrylics really really well so you don't have to have water around you can just use a little windex and that cleans brushes off with the acrylic it doesn't work with the enamel of course you have to have the uh, paint thinner for that but for acrylics use uh, windex <laughs> All right, back over here on the layout, you, know, you can see I finished the painting. Um, I was doing some experiments with what kind of coupler I would need. And it looks like as far as coupler height goes, I'm going to need an over shank. I'm sorry, an under shank long. Now, I only had some uh, Bachmann's, uh, the plastic ones, in stock. But I'll get some KDs that are the same thing. But it looks like... That matches up as far as height-wise goes pretty well. If I need a little extra height to make it perfect, I can put a washer under the trucks to get that height perfect. But I think that's going to work for now. Under shank, uh, long shaft, and that's going to give me the clearance I need for turns. It made a, a complete circuit around the layout just fine. Okay, so I've got the car pretty much back together. We've road tested it. I've put these Bachman Easy Mate connectors on it uh, just temporarily. I uh, don't like those. I've got some KD number 149s on order. And so when those come, we'll replace it. The boxes are painted a nice olive drab color. I think that looks really good. So now let's put a little grimy black uh, powder on here. I like to work on aluminum foil because um, when you drop the powder, you can get it back. You can put it in a little container like this and kind of save it. Um, and it, it doesn't make as much of a mess. It tends to, to uh, stick to the cutting mat. So I'm just going to take some of this here and I'm just going to go across the road, the, the bed of the flatbed here and you can see how it just dulls it out and makes it look grimy even put some streaks in there we'll put a little bit 
in here. This is just to give this thing a little more realism. Okay, so we'll just do that right across this bed here like this. Like I said, I did spray it with dull coat before I started. So the dull coat helps the powder to stick to it. I just blow it off a little bit, the excess. It gives it a real nice, it's not, you know, a super apparent, but it is nice and uh, just gives it some lines in there, some dirt. Now, this is going to be noticeable. We're going to want to do this on the sides, and we're just going to streak down, especially across the lettering. That way it'll, it'll dull that down a little bit. Make it look like this is a working car. It's really been in use. Flip around to the other side here. And especially where these letters are. See that? Awesome. Even got a little bit on the toolbox there, which is good. Some dirt. Get a little dirt on there. All right. I'm going to switch to uh, maybe a little bit of rust. Yeah, grab the uh, light rust here, and I'm just going to make a few little streaks and I like to put it on the trucks like that and a couple little streaks now remember with weathering powders you can take them off you can uh, wash them off if you need to but uh, Sometimes I feel like I've gone too far. <laughs> and remember, this is a, this thing, you know, it's probably sat out the, the boxcar and gotten some rain and stuff. But, you know, it pretty much carries this airplane. And airplanes are, for the most part, pretty clean loads. So it's not going to get a whole lot of weird uh, stuff from the airplanes. So that looks pretty good blow off the excess okay all right we'll do the same for the other side okay the last color i'm going to do see i've got some nice rust streaks on there both sides and on the trucks and stuff the last color i'm going to do is medium earth and that's going to be just like uh dirt and stuff that's splashed up you know, on the side of the car here. Uh, not so much rust as mud and grime up along the bottom of the carriage there. Um, looks good. It also looks good to put it on the trucks. So kind of like that. And then don't forget the front of the car as well. I've got a, not a great camera angle here, but just a little bit on the front as well. Splash up around the coupler and stuff, so like that. And uh, we'll go ahead and do just a little bit more right along here. See how that just just really looks good with the the brush. Use a real soft brush, almost like a makeup brush. And just imagine that mud and stuff with just splashing up there. So we can do a little bit more along here. It's a little lower right there, closer to the to the ground. So there, looks pretty good. I'll do the other side and then uh, we'll take a, a look at it. Okay, I did the other side. Now I'm just gonna do a little bit of the dirt just to dirty up the floor of the car here make it look a little more realistic instead of just grimy black
Now, a lot of guys will set this in with uh, another shot of dull coat or some sort of clear. I don't do that. Um, I don't want it to be permanent <laughs> in case I change my mind. But uh, it'll stay on for the most part. It does lighten up a little bit after you know a while over time. But this is good. Get some dirt on there. So there you go. Got some dirt on it. Got some dirt on the bed. Of course, front and back. So let's go put our airplane on it and see what we've got. All right, there we go with the airplane load on it. Now that's the original plane. Um, I haven't had time with this video to... Uh, to get into painting the airplanes and uh, that. And in fact, I didn't uh, finish other than painting the boxes on this car. So we're gonna have to get that uh, set up the same way as this one. But uh, just for time's sake, uh, we'll just show this one today. But uh, I think that looks pretty good. Remember, I always say weathering makes a toy train look like a model train so that's what really gives it the realism so let's uh, take it over to the layout and run it around a couple times and there it goes so far it's tracking fine i uh, put a couple cars on it uh, just for a little more realism but this is uh the first time that car's run in a long long time All right, the airplane car rides again. <laughs> Looking pretty good. Let's see if I've got it, uh, got the coupler adjusted enough so it can make it over the cross there. You made it, all right. Well, I'm very happy about that. We'll get the other uh, car going pretty soon. So next time we'll have two of them running around the layout. All right, well, thanks again, you guys, for uh, watching the video and supporting my channel. Again, if you want to check out the merch uh, down at the bottom of the description and the super thanks, that would be greatly appreciated to help uh, uh, support the channel. So appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next video. Take care. Looking pretty good. When I get the other airplane done and the other car, we'll have two of them. That'll look pretty cool on the layout. I'm liking it. Uh-oh. <laughs>